In this video, I'm going to show you how you can speed up your editing in iMovie using the clip trimmer. Hey, it's Mike with more tips and tutorials to help you create great video for your YouTube channel, your video marketing or online courses. Thank you so much for being here. You know, iMovie contains many features that can really speed up your video editing workflow. The problem is some of those features are hard to see. One example is the clip trimmer. Now you might be saying, well, it's pretty obvious what the clip trimmer does. It trims clips. Yes, but why would you use it? I mean, you can easily trim clips right in the iMovie timeline by simply clicking and dragging on the in point and out point of a clip. There's more to the clip trimmer than just trimming clips. It contains a hidden feature that can really save you a lot of time during the editing process. Let me show you what I mean. So here we are in iMovie. This is version 10.1.11 running on Mac OS Mojave 10.14.4 for your reference. And I have a couple of sequences down here in the timeline. This first one is a series of clips with a narration track underneath. You can use external USB microphones like this Blue Yeti Pro. You could... Okay, let me show you how to trim clips using the clip trimmer. To use the clip trimmer on a clip, just right click or control click on the clip and from the pop-up menu select Show Clip Trimmer. And the timeline changes from one track to two tracks. The bottom track is the main timeline and this black space with the downward pointing arrow is where the clip you're trimming sits in the main timeline. The clip you're actually trimming is up here in this second track above the main timeline track. So if you take a look at the clip trimmer, you see we have two vertical white bars. The left bar is where the clip starts in the timeline, the end point. The right bar is where the clip ends in the timeline, the out point of the clip. The area between the two bars is the part of the clip that's actually showing in the timeline. These dimmer areas on either side of the vertical bars are the parts of the clip not being shown in the timeline. So this is the entirety of the media that's connected to this clip. When I hover over the clip, I get this red vertical scrubber bar so I can scrub through the clip to see the content, even beyond the in and out points of the clip, which can help me with editing decisions. That's an advantage of using the clip trimmer. You can see the media that's not being used on either side of the clip. You can't do that in the timeline. To trim a clip in the clip trimmer, you just click and drag the left bar to trim the in point of the clip. Drag the right bar to trim the out point of the clip. To preview the edit, I move my cursor outside of the clip trimmer and hit the space bar. Really not that different from trimming right in the timeline, is it? So what's the big deal, Mike? Where's this hidden feature that you talked about that's going to save me a ton of time in editing? Well, take a look at the cursor when I hover over the clip in the clip trimmer. It changes to this strange icon with two arrows and what looks like a film strip in the middle. When this icon is visible and I click and drag on the clip, I can move the clip back and forth between the in and out points, which don't move. So the duration of the clip in the timeline does not change. Only the content between the in point and out points of the clip changes. And you can see that over here in the viewer. When you click on a clip in the clip trimmer, these two windows appear in the viewer. These windows correspond to the two white vertical bars. The left window shows the content of the clip at the in point, the left bar. The right window shows the content of the clip at the out point, the right bar. As you click and drag the clip, the windows update to show what's going to happen at the in point and out point of the clip when you let go. In professional editing, we call this move slipping the clip or a slip edit. I know, fascinating, right? But in what editing situation would I ever use a slip edit? Well, let me show you a couple of examples. I'm going to close the clip trimmer and I can do that in several ways. I can click the little X beside this close clip trimmer label or click this downward pointing arrow on the timeline or hit the return key. I'll click the arrow in the timeline to close the clip trimmer. 
All right, let's have another look at this sequence with the narration. I'll play it by hitting the space bar. You can use external USB microphones like this Blue Yeti Pro. You can also buy USB to mini plug adapters. These gadgets are great because they allow you to plug in microphones that use a familiar 3.5 millimeter input, like this lavalier microphone. Now, it's a little thing, but I think this sequence would have more impact if, when after I say, you can buy USB to mini plug adapters, we see and hear the mini plug adapter being plugged into the laptop. It'd be a nice punctuation. Well, I could make that happen by trimming the shot of the adapter going into the laptop. It would take me several adjustments, but I'd eventually get things lined up. But let me tell you from experience, Several adjustments over the course of a long editing project can add up to hours of wasted time and effort, not to mention wear and tear on the wrist. So to make my adjustments and to save time, I'm going to use a slip edit. The first thing I'm going to do is mark the point in the narration where I finish saying you can buy USB to mini plug adapters. To do that, I'll just scrub through the narration track to find that spot. So buy USB to mini plug adapters. Then I'll click to select the narration track at that point and press the keyboard shortcut M to place a marker on the track at that point. Next, I'm going to select the clip where the USB adapter goes into the laptop. I'll right click or control click to bring up the pop-up menu and select show clip trimmer. With the clip now open in the clip trimmer, I'm going to find the exact spot in the clip where the USB adapter goes into the laptop. Then I'll click and drag that point in the clip until it lines up with my marker on the narration track. Let's see what this looks like. I'll place my cursor outside of the clip trimmer area and hit the space bar to preview the edit. You can use external USB microphones like this Blue Yeti Pro. You can also buy USB to mini plug adapters. These gadgets are great because they allow you... Now this is not a necessary adjustment, but it's a nice professional touch. So you can use slip edits to line up events in the video track with events in the audio track. But where slip edits really save you a ton of grief is when you're editing your video to music. I've got this sequence over here on the timeline. It's a short montage, just a series of shots edited to a short music track. And I've cut the shots more or less on the beat of the music with some variation. Let's play it. Not bad, but there's something bothering me. Some of these shots feel off in terms of what they're showing. For example, this shot here of me with a lower third graphic coming on screen. The lower third never finishes its entrance. I'd like it to finish, so how would I fix that edit? Well, I could trim the clip to get more of the lower third in the shot, but when I do that, I throw off the timing of these other clips with the music all the way down the rest of the timeline. It's a ripple effect. So I'm going to have to go back and make more adjustments to get clips back in sync with the music. Now that may not be a big deal for one clip, but what about a dozen clips or two dozen clips? What if you're editing a music video? It can add up to a lot of work. There's a faster way to make those adjustments using slip edits in the clip trimmer. Let me show you. I'll select the clip with the lower third animation, right click or control click, and from the pop-up menu, I'll select show clip trimmer. And then while keeping an eye on the in point and out point of the clip in the viewer, I'll click and drag the clip until I get what I want to see in the shot. Let's play this now. That's better. Let's fix another one. 
Now, to adjust another clip, I don't have to exit the clip trimmer. I can just click on the clip I want to edit, and it pops up into the clip trimmer automatically. Let's adjust this shot of me setting up this lighting bounce board. I think I need to get out of this shot later, maybe when I lean out to look at the bounce board. I'll click and drag while watching the in and out points in the viewer. And that looks pretty good. Let's see how that works. I like that much better. So there you have it. iMovie's Clip Trimmer with the hidden power of slip editing. Just another one of those pro-level features you'll find in this amateur video editing software. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you found value in it. And if you want more tips and tutorials for creating video, then please check out the rest of the videos on my channel. And of course, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit the little bell icon so you don't miss a thing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.